This video is brought to you by DAP Canada. For this outdoor serving cart slash bar cart, I'm using cedar fence boards. Cedar is both weather and rot resistant and also readily available. Just make sure to pick out the straightest boards you can find. The boards have slightly rounded edges, not much, but still. So I'll first shave off one edge of the board to get a square reference edge. There are a few things I like to do when cutting construction grade lumber that hasn't been milled perfectly square and may have a mind of its own with all the knots and bends. Number one is to make sure I'm using my blade guard for maximum safety. Number two, I like to use a roller stand like this one I got from Princess Auto. It helps support the board on the infeed and gives you more control over the board overall. And three, I like to use a feather board to make sure that the board stays snug against the fence and you'll get a nice even width cut. After ripping all my strips to width, I'll use the miter saw to cut the boards to length. I highly recommend using a stop block to ensure that all the mirrored parts are the exact same length. Otherwise your cart might end up lopsided. I also like to label my parts as I cut them, as it can quickly get confusing once they start to pile up. I have plans available for this build if you're interested, and you'll find that link in the description down below. Before assembly, I'm going to give all my pieces a very slight chamfer. I'll start with the end grain, which is more prone to tear out. Running them through grouped in batches helps to prevent that tear out. Then running them through on the long edge will clean up any frayed edges. If you don't have a router table, this can be done with a handheld trim router just as well. The chamfer is almost unnoticeable, just enough to break the edges and give the build a more professional look. Okay, so this card is going to be assembled in sections, starting with the bottom shelf. I've got my frame laid out here, and I'll start by adding a cleat to support the slats. Since this is an outdoor build, I'm using Type 3 waterproof wood glue. I want the spacing to be the width of a slat, so I'll use a leftover offcut as a spacer and tack it in place with a couple nails. I can then drill countersink pilot holes and secure the cleat with screws. I'm using exterior grade screws for this so they won't rust or fail over time. Next I can assemble the frame using glue and screws. There are plenty of other joinery options if you prefer, but I like the simplicity of screws. I don't like the look of screws though. But that being said, you'll notice I'm countersinking the screws pretty deep, and that's so I can use plugs later on to hide those screws. I'll apply a thick bead of glue to each of the cleats, then drop in the slats one by one. To get the spacing consistent between the slats, I cut a bunch of random squares out of thin plywood. Just remember to remove them immediately so they don't dry into the glue. At first I was going to try to get away with not nailing down the slats, but I remembered a trick I recently saw. I think it was a YouTube shorts video actually. Anyway, the trick was to conceal the nail heads using wood filler without making a mess. The guy in the video first applied a piece of painter's tape before driving in the brad nails. He then immediately applied the wood filler over the tape. I'm using DAP Wood Pro Wood Filler. It comes in various tins so you can easily match the wood species you're using and it's suitable for both indoor and outdoor projects. Here I'm using their natural color that goes great with this cedar wood. I'll leave a link to this wood filler down in the description below. After working it into the nail holes, I can peel back the tape. And you know what? It actually worked. I don't even need to spend any time sanding. Okay, but what about those unsightly screw holes? We'll get to that, but first let's assemble the top shelf. As you can see here, the top has tapered ends and a round handlebar. You could use a tapering jig to cut that taper or simply cut it by hand like this. I've traced my line here and I can simply make the cut using a flush trim saw. I'm purposely staying outside the lines here. So once both are cut, I'll clamp them together, then sand up to the line.
and voila. Next I'll mark the spot for the handlebar and use my drill press to make a shallow hole in each part. The handlebar is actually a simple piece of dowel that I'll cut to size. You may have noticed that it's black. To achieve this look, I used India ink. Just one coat is all you need and it dries super fast. I'll add a clear coat of spray on poly after that and that's it. Assembly of the top shelf is just like before with the bottom shelf, but I'll first start by fitting the dowel before securing the sides with screws. All right, so back to those ugly screw holes. At first I planned to cut cedar plugs to match the cedar wood, but I immediately noticed that the plugs weren't coming out clean at all. Cedar wood is just too soft and porous, so the plugs look like they were chewed by a dog. I decided to test cutting plugs out of poplar, which is close enough in color, I guess. These plugs came out nice and clean. If you're curious about this plug cutter, I'll leave a link down below. Just drill as deep as you'd like, then pop them out with a screwdriver. Installing the plugs is pretty straightforward. Just fill the hole with glue and tap in the plug. Then wipe away most of the glue and let it dry. You can then come back with a flush trim saw to trim off the excess. I picked up this card trick from Brad at Fix This Build That. It really helps to prevent the saw from gouging the wood as you make these cuts. A little sanding. And voila! Barely noticeable. All right, so after plugging all the holes, I built two small shelves using the same process as for the larger ones. And with that, I'm now ready to assemble the cart. All right, it's time to make some room in here and move this build to the floor. I didn't want to scratch the sides on the concrete floor, so at first I tried to sit them on these bench cookies, but it really wasn't happening. Eventually I had the idea to use a clamp to hold up the side and this worked out really great. The assembly will be more glue and screws, but the trick here is to get the alignment just right. Notice here how the clamp gives me a reference edge? I'm not going to measure anything at all here, but instead I'll use pre-cut spacers. Once clamped, I'll drill countersink pilot holes and secure with screws. I used a speed square as I went to make sure everything was nice and square. If you're a little OCD like I am, you can mark some layout lines for the screw placement so they're all perfectly aligned. After the four corners are done, I'll add the middle legs that will help support the small shelves. Again, no measuring here. Instead, I've cut some spacers using the leftover offcuts. You know the drill, glue, pilot hole, and screws. With that done, I can move the build back onto the bench so I could install the shelves. By now you get the picture. It seems simple, but sometimes the smallest little tricks like using spacer blocks can really help make a build easier.
By the way, there are plans available for this outdoor serving cart or bar cart or whatever type of cart you want to use this as. You'll find a link to that down below. At this point, it was time to cut some more plugs. A lot of plugs. Rather than popping them out one by one, I used the bandsaw to cut them loose. And let me tell you, this was way more satisfying. There were 32 plugs to install, but it went pretty fast. After they had dried and I trimmed them all back, then sanded everything down, there were a few with slight imperfections. Even with the best countersink bit, cedar wood doesn't always cut clean. I filled all the imperfections with a little DAP wood pro and let it dry. Then gave it a quick sanding and... Perfect. Last but not least are the wheels. I have a video on four ways to cut circles. You can use any of those methods, but the easiest is using a bandsaw circle jig. I want 5 inch wheels, so I'll set a pin at half that distance from the blade. Next I'll find the center of my blank here just by connecting the opposite corners, and drill a small hole all the way through. I can then use that hole to mount it to the pin on the jig. And now comes the fun part. Just push the jig until it hits the stops, then rotate the blank. You'll need to give the edges a good sanding, but otherwise you've got two perfect identical circles. I'll use carriage bolts to install these wheels. I'll first drill a recess to countersink the carriage bolt head, then drill all the way through with a smaller Forstner bit. I found these black carriage bolts and washers, but forgot I needed a washer between the wheel and the leg, so that's the only reason why one of the washers is a different color. Another washer on the back side, followed by two hex nuts. Then just finger tighten and counter tighten the nut closest to the wheel to lock them in. You can also cut the bolts to length as well. And just like that, we have a mobile outdoor serving cart that's ready for all those summer barbecues. I don't know about you, but there never seems to be enough room on the table for everything when I've got guests over on the deck. But now, problem solved. You can grab the plans here if you're interested or click on the link down below. Until next time, thanks for watching. See you soon.